Hi, today I want to look into the panel code to explain you what it is doing. So first of all, let me say that we have three main uh, repos repositories to keep in mind. The first one is Plasma Framework, the second one is Plasma Workspace and the third one is Plasma Desktop. So what's the difference? They all come together and form the Plasma Desktop as we know it, but that's not the only function for two of those. The first one, Plasma Framework, is more generally about giving uh, libraries and the themes that Plasma can use not only on the desktop, but as an example also in Plasma Mobile. So we have in the source directory the um, as uh, the desktop theme, which is the one we all know, Breeze, which is again not used only on the Plasma desktop, but we also have as an example declarat declarative imports with Plasma components, which are um, components that you can reuse both in Plasma, uh, maybe in apps uh, and in general in the, the shells that use Plasma. Then we have Plasma Workspace, which again is not just about Plasma Desktop, uh, but this time we have more complete components. As an example, we have the applets, with many of the applets that we use going from kickoff to the clock. But again, kickoff and the clock and the system tray, they are all applets that can also make sense on different kind of devices, not just the desktop. Whereas the last repository, which is Plasma Desktop, is the one that is only about Plasma Desktop and is the actual shell we are using. So we have again an applets uh, directory as soon as I find uh, here it is, with all the um, applets that only make sense on Plasma Desktop. As an example, the show desktop applet or the margin separator and so on. So said that, there's another thing we need we need to keep into our mind, uh, which is the difference between containment and views. So if we look at the Plasma desktop, we have two main components, let's say the, um, des the actual desktop or the background rather with uh, the image and possibly icons. I don't have any icons, but you can have icons uh, on your background. And then there's the panel. These are the views of the Plasma desktop, the panel and the desktop. We could potentially have more as an example, we could have a sidebar and we would have a sidebar view. But in this case, we only have these two. So these views are into our uh, Plasma desktop folder, into desktop package, contents, and then views. We have the panel and the desktop. But it's, it doesn't end here. The panel and desktop views are only the containers. And uh, in the panel case, they draw the um, panel background. But that's about it. They don't actually have the content nor they uh, manage it. For actually managing the content, we have the containers, containments, sorry. So we have, um, let's say, about three important containments to keep in mind. The first one is the panel one, which um, actually manages the applets inside of it. And then for uh, the desktop view, we have the um, just the background image uh, containment and the files uh, containment where you can also have files uh, um, as you as your background and you can switch between them using layout folder view and desktop so what we are interested in is the panel so we can also see that uh, if we get back to the Plasma Desktop directory, because this is all about Plasma Desktop and just Plasma Desktop, we can go into the containments directory. We have the panel, the folder, and the desktop. And then what we are interested in is the panel. And then we have the contents and uh, the UI part of it with uh, two QML files and a JS one. So this is the second part of panel code that we are interested in. Finally, there's a third part, which is actually in Plasma Workspace. So not just about the Plasma Desktop panel, but could also be reused in other shells, which is inside of shell. And then you search for panel. We have the panel view, the panel view, the panel config view, but this is less interesting 
and the panel shadows again less interesting we are mainly interested in the panel view code so we have the views with a panel view then the panel view code which is in C++ and finally the containment which is in QML and JavaScript so let's look into them the first one which I want to talk about is the QML uh, code for the view it's actually pretty short for you know code uh, standards just 250 lines and let's see what this says so first of all, this QML file has a property that is the containment. This one is the actual uh, panel containment, which is, you know, pretty important to have. Then we have the panel mask, uh, less interest interesting stuff. And then we have as a Qt object, this private swapper, and we'll see later what this does. So we have um, uh, bo boolean property to see if this has, is a vertical panel and this is directly taken from the containment information we check if we have the containment and if we do we check what form of factor it has and then we have the spacing at minimum size because if you look into the, the panel when you edit it you see that it has a margin and if you scale down the panel so you can see that the mar that margin um, shrinks because it would not make sense to use always the same margin when the panel is big and when it is very small because otherwise when the panel is small you have super small icons when you could have just bigger ones using a smaller par par sorry margin so what we do what we do is to uh, calculate this value spacing at minimum size which basically says this is um, the least amount of uh, top padding actually it is let's say the maximum amount of margin that you can say that you can put if you have too much margin and the margin is bigger than this value um, then the margin will be shrink down because otherwise the icons would not fit and how this is used is just down here so we calculate the top bottom left and right pa um, paddings margin and we do this by taking the actual margin from the svg uh, where the margin is defined from the plasma theme and then we um, use minimum to take the minimum between those two so this one acts like a top number which you cannot go uh, past and uh, the fixed margins is are taken from the SVG which is this one and this component plasma core dot frame SVG item item sorry is actually from plasma framework you have this uh, plasma core um, um, not here but somewhere <laughs> um, I don't remember all of the stuff but it's around here somewhere okay it is in the declarative imports directory the core directory is plasma core and uh, this uh, frame svg item is this frame svg item so this is much longer code but we don't really need to know what this does uh, except that it actually loads the SVG from the plasma theme and draws, n not draws it, this doesn't actually draws the SVG, this just loads it into memory. And what we do with this SVG is to read the margin, and that's it, we don't actually draw it on the view. The, the drawing is done later on, so we can then see that we have uh, the task manager so what you might ask what is the task manager doing here this is not actually the task manager but it is a um, model that we use to uh, know uh, information about the virtual desktop and the activities and we need to know about this too to actually know if a windows is mas maximized in this desktop and in this um, activity and why are we interested if a window is maximized or not? Well, because we need to provide adaptive transparency. So an, a maximized um, window will make the panel opaque, opaque. 
And this is something that we need to know. So we take the virtual desktop information, the activity information, and then we sort all of the uh, visible windows based on whether they're uh, minimized, I'm sorry, uh, so that they are not minimized, so only the open ones. And then we filter by the fact that they are not minimized, uh, sorry, not maximized in this screen and in this activity. And of course, if there are any, the panel will be opaque. Finally, we have these other two frame SVG items, which are actually used to um, draw the panel, but uh, we have two of them, so you might ask why two? Well, one is used to draw the normal um, panel and the other one is used to draw the opaque one. So this is translucent item and this is opaque item. And the, pan the panel will switch between the two based on whether there are maximized windows or not. So what we say here and here is that the borders that are enabled are the borders that are enabled for the panel, which is basically in this case like uh, the top one be because the bottom one, the left one and the right one are covered by, you know, the, it, it, the screen just ends there. So we don't have a right, bottom and left border. And then we say an anchors feel parent, which means uh, take as much uh, space at, as it's needed so that it actually fits uh, the panel view. And then we have the image path, which is uh, where we actually take this uh, SVG from, which is uh, widgets panel background and the solid widgets panel background for the big one. So then finally we have um, the transitions, uh, but um, yeah, th these are just to make a transition from uh, the translucent one to the opaque one. So basically what we say is, is that we give an opacity to the opaque one and we make it appear or disappear based on whether there's a maximized window. So this is the transition from um, opaque to transparent and this is one from transparent to opaque. And then we have um, this little bit of code that actually reads uh, the opacity mode of the panel and checks out if it should be uh, transparent, opaque or adaptive. And if it's adaptive, it will actually check the window model count to see if any windows is maximized. And if there is, then we go for an opaque panel, otherwise transparent one. In, if instead, uh, in, instead uh, the panel opacity mode is always opaque, we always choose opaque, otherwise we always choose transparent. Then uh, there's also this um, display hint, which is basically saying that uh, we need to be uh, opaque also not only to the panel, but also to the applets inside of it. So what we're saying is tell the containment, which in this turn will tell the applets, that we the desktop is either fully covered or it isn't. Then we have the states. We have two states, uh, one for when the panel is opaque and one for when the panel is transparent. So, uh, of course, as we've seen before, we can make a transition from one state to another and uh, later on, uh, I think later on, where is it, sorry. Um, actually not later on, right now. Yeah, it, it's used to the transition between the two. And then uh, I got lost. We have this function which adjusts the prefix which uh, basically says that uh, if we are a bottom panel like this, if we are a bottom panel, then we are interested in the prefix south, mostly uh, as an example for the task manager, because if you actually go see the task manager code, you have a version of the task manager for the bottom, one for the left, one for the north, uh, for the top, and one for the, for the right and their names are north, uh, sud, east, and west. So we need uh, a function that says, okay, if we are on the left edge, 
our prefix is going to be west, if we are on the top edge it's going to be north and so on. Uh, the default prefix if we are not in any position which should I guess never happen is just an empty prefix. Then we have this uncontainment change which basically says whenever we change the we change the containment item from one panel to another which again should rarely happen if not uh, like when you actually turn on the the your pc and you switch from having no panel to having your panel so this runs and uh, when the containment actually changes so when it's set you set the parent uh, of the containment to this item, this empty item, then we set it uh, to visible so that we can actually see the containment which remember is what actually deals with the panel, we'll see it later. And then we say that it should fill the containment parent item which is this one. And then we also adjust the prefix so that you know we know which prefix to use. Then finally we have a binding fr um, from uh, the property panel length when uh, containment value blah blah blah. So basically what this says is that the length property of the panel only exists when uh, the containment is a set and its value is that if there's no containment then return. If there's a vertical pa uh, panel then return the containment layout preferred height so if there's a vertical panel the length is going to be the height and if uh, there is an or horizontal panel then return the width which, because the length of the panel is going to be the width then we have this other binding about background hints and uh, again what this says is that uh, well it just reads the background hints um, property of the containment so that's about it then finally, as our last uh, piece of code, we have this item, which is the containment parent, which is just an um, item that we use to say, okay, our containment is going to go in here. So it's like uh, containment here. And when we actually run the code, we are going to actually move the QML of uh, the QML object of the container inside of here. So this is the containment, sorry, this is the view, not the containment. And um, now we can actually give also a look to the C++ code for the panel, which is this one. And this one is quite long, it does lots of thing. And I'm not going to showcase each one, each property, but let's just say that it covers all of the properties of the panel. So we have the max length and the min, min and the maximum length and the minimum length that the panel can have, the thickness of the panel, the alignment, whether it's on the left, on the center, or on the right, the visibility mode, whether, I don't know exactly what uh, this value is, but we also have the opacity mode, whether it's adaptive, um, trans always transparent or opaque the background ins and so on. So we have a bit of code that actually reads the values and sets them. And then we have all the functions which actually we can better showcase from the H file in here. So we have many properties um, that are actually readable from QML2, I think. Is this what Q property? Uh, Yes, that is uh, that are also readable by QML also. In general, there are Q properties. It's not just QML. Uh, we have the alignment of uh, the panel, which again left, center, right. The offset compared to that alignment, the thickness of the panel, the length, and so on. All of the properties of our panel. Then we have um, yes the. Uh, enumerations for the various values of the above Q property. So we have the visibility mode, which can be normal, auto height, let windows go uh, cover and windows go below. So, you know, uh, now I actually know what the visibility mo mode is. And there's also explanation about it in the comments, the opacity mode and so on. 
Then we have the functions to actually read those values such as the thickness and also set them. Uh, these values are referenced in the queue property, so same thing. <coughs> And then finally we have the actual functions. Uh, we have the resize event, the show event, move event, and general event. So this is event handling. And if we actually take this function in the actual code, there's something interesting. Uh, and that is, I showed it last time, that this part is, um, what this part is saying is that if uh, the containment, which again remember is the part inside of it, contains the position of the mouse, uh, sorry, if it does not contain the position of the mouse, then uh, move uh, the event, let's say the mouse, it's as if we're moving the mouse event inside of the containment, so it is still uh, registered because the containment is actually a bit smaller compared the um, no it, the containment is actually just as big but the applet are smaller because they have a margin and if you click outside the margin they still get um, triggered because we have this piece of code that redirects the mouse input inside of them <coughs> so what else we have um, some signals. Uh, the sig signals are functions that are called when something happens and you can connect uh, these signals to this, uh, some slots um, to make uh, those slots be called when the, signal, uh, the signals are called. So we have a signal for when the alignment changes, the offset changes and so on. We have the queue slots, which again can be um, linked to some queue signals, not uh, necessarily these ones. Uh, and this one is uh, for um, uh, position in the panel, I guess. This one is restore, show temporarily. And we could see the code for each one, but uh, it's not really interesting. And then finally, we have all the actual values the offset, the length that are read with the functions that are above. So this is the panel view. Again, it's pretty useless to see all of the C++ code line by line because you only uh, you know work on the part you're interested in, but it's just to give an overview. And then finally, when we can look into the final component, which is actually the containment which is this one. And remember that the containment is inside of the view and that it holds um, the applets. <coughs> so we can see that the containment is um, as uh, the size, uh, is this the right uh, containment? Yes. Um, we can see, okay, let's start from here. Again, um, I, I won't explain every, every, every line, but we have the frame SVG item as before. One is for the normal SVG and one for the thick SVG. So the difference between these two is that the normal one is um, this uh, part on the left and the thick one is this part on the right. And the, the um, link between them is the margin separator. We switch from the normal one to the thick one. As you can see, the margin changes from small to bigger. Now, this is not, uh, th these two are not actually drawn. They are just to uh, read uh, the margins of uh, the small one and the thick margins. So again, not drawn as before, but only to read the margins. The actual drawing of the panel is in the view in uh, these uh, two, where are these two items, not here. So we have another couple of properties of our inter interest, like whether margin areas are enabled, whether uh, we have, um, sorry, not whether, but the property that holds the actually highlight SVG to draw the highlight, and then we also have the spacing at minimum size that we also saw in the view. It's the same thing. Again, we need to calculate the margins, which means that we need to also calculate here what is the maximum value of the margins. And then we have some code to add an applet. Uh, 
are the taking as parameters the applet and the x and the y where it has been dropped and uh, what this does without seeing like each element is that we are um, looking uh, uh, so first of all uh, we insert the item before the DN, uh, dnd spacer if there is one the dnd spacer i think uh, i got a bit confused on this thing is uh, the spacer uh, that you have when you drag something you can see that like there is this big empty space uh, and this is the drag and drop spacer so i think that that's what it does sorry i dragged the uh whoops i actually accidentally dragged the margin outside i can't get it back okay fantastic uh never mind so let's get back to the code and uh, then when uh, we insert uh, the element before the spacer we update the margins then we say if there is no drag and drop uh, placeholder such as if you are dragging in a new element then insert um, the this um, this uh, container okay Yes, because it's, it creates a container for the applet. All of the applets are inside a container. So we insert the container as uh, uh, in, in the X and Y coordinates that are given. So we first check if there's a um, drag and drop placeholder and then replace it. Otherwise, we just use the position, position given if they're valid, so more uh, or equal to zero. If they are not valid, then fall through to determining an appropriate insert position. There's a long like fix me to do here. This is not in the interesting case, so let's forget about it. Then we have a checklist spacer, which is a function that I'll admit I did not truly really understand, so forget about this one, sorry. And then we have um, some setting up of this layout manager and the layout manager is uh, the JavaScript code that we have here. So what we are doing in um, this component on completed, which is which runs as soon as the panel is loaded, is that we set the plasmoid to the plasmoid, the root to the root and so on. So uh, an interesting stuff. So that uh, then we say when uh, we start dragging uh, something inside of uh, the panel. If the plasmoid is immutable, which means that we are not in edit mode, then ignore the event. Otherwise, if it's um, horizontal, set the um, fix it with, well, this doesn't uh, seem interesting, but um, the interesting part is this one. Uh, if uh, you um, come in dragging something, insert the drag and drop, drag and drop a spacer into the position that uh, was given, which means that if I start dragging an applet inside of the panel, the, this drag and drop spacer will appear. You see that there's, there's a spacer. This is the drag and drop spacer. And if, of course, if we, um, stop uh, dragging and we actually insert the applet the drag and drop spacer will be replaced with the applet as we've seen in the code before add applet like this so let's also remove it because um, i don't actually want uh, these activities applet here and then we can see that the on drag move uh, same thing we insert the dnd spacer uh, to the event uh, x and y and when we leave uh, the, the drag leaves the panel, we just um, remove uh, the drag and drop spacer by setting its parent to root and then we say that the width and the height of this um, drag and drop spacer will be 0 and 0. So uh, it disappears. But when you actually drop something inside of the panel, then uh, process my data blah blah blah, accept the event, um, then uh, Oh yeah, this is actually all not interesting stuff. Uh, it, um, it's handled uh, somewhere else interesting, which is probably here, which is um, a uh, containment. Uh, this is using the um, 
containment API and uh, it says when you add an applet then call the add applet function at um, the x and y given and save the new layout to file so that when you restart your system it's still like that. Similarly when an applet is removed call the remove applet function which is not above it's either below or in the contain uh, in the um, js file so let's see if it's in the js file here uh, no i did not mean to open ours to open a js file so close thank you and if we drag it to kate we can check that we actually have this remove applet function which get call gets called and what this does is basically that uh, it loops over the children of the panel which is the is this in this case it's called layout and then when it actually finds the child which applet is the applet we are removing then it just destroys that uh, that applet so it's no longer in the panel so if we get back here there's also on user config, uh, configuring change but uh, this is not interesting and then yes stuff like that um, yes uh, then we have the components we have uh, this component which is very important which is the container of the applet which is uh, where the applet actually lies and of course the container of the applet will actually have um, an applet somewhere where is it here applet as a property but also a lot of code so we can see this code we have a property on whether this container is in a thick area so on the right all of these applets are in a thick area all of the applets on the left are not in a thick area and then whether animation are enabled then we have the code uh, for the actual you know, handling of um, filling width and height if there are a spacer like something like that and then there's this get margin function which is um, to help getting the actual margins and what this does is I'll just explain it uh, a bit easier is just it takes um, the margin from the SVGs that we've seen on the top based on whether we are in a normal panel on the or the thick uh, part of the panel and then it does all the math with you know the spacing at minimum size and stuff like stuff like that and then when we actually are able to read the margins we set the width the um, height we do it three times one time from for the minimum one time from for the preferred and one time for the maximum but this should be about the same in all three cases let's see um, if there's any outstanding difference yes uh, in this case we are basing it on the applet layout minimum width preferred width and maximum width so the minimum is of course uh, the minimum amount of width that the applets needs to have the preferred one is how much width the applet would like to have and then the maximum is in the, the maximum they can have so uh, of course when we set the width is that uh, we get the root height and the root width and then we take off the left and right margin and then finally we have these properties old x and old y which uh, uh, let me check where they're used not in this file and um, in here okay so okay yes this is for the um, uh, for the translations Yes, so basically we save uh, the, the position of the item and then when we actually change uh, the position of the applet then we see what change has been done from the old X and the new X and we save it uh, as a transition. And this both for the X axis and the Y one. 
and then we do um, a number animation to actually um, animate uh, the, these uh, translation properties so that moving an applet is something that's animated and not just uh, that uh, goes from one spot to another instantly and that's it this is the container for the applet then we have another uh, this is the one I actually wrote, so it's horrible. Uh, just kidding. This is the rectangle height light element, which is this element, the blue line that goes from being small, then gets bigger on the right size, and it could technically get smaller again and then bigger. So it needs to be flexible. And I will not ex explain like each property because um, it's a bit of a complex uh, element. I'll just say that there's like a component and then another component inside of it. So not something you'd uh, want to use. Um, like if, if you need to change this code, uh, write to me because it's a bit complex compared to what was above. But basically what this does is just to draw that element and then we allow for enough customization to have like a top one for the fill um, um, for the fill part uh, and then a step one which is where uh, it changes from small to big and then a field step which is basically um, the part which is not uh, this is complex to explain not uh, the um, the line itself that goes from small to big but the part above it and then so on then we have uh, the UI components which is the actually the things you actually see so we have again the margin around the panel uh, only left and right if we have a horizontal one and if we have a vertical one it's only top on top and bottom because the top and the bottom margins are defined but by, by the applet uh, container themselves then we have uh, this last spacer which again i'm not sure what um, was the purpose of it but there's also the drag and drop spacer, which again is this, the one we've seen before when we actually try to drag something inside of the panel. So there's other stuff, but then there's this uh, grid layout with this current layout um, ID, which is where we actually have all the applets. Um, so this is like the actual uh, component where we'll have uh, the applets inside of and then we have like one row and one column but of course that's uh, that won't be the case when the all the applets populate the panel and it's a grid because um, on the bottom panel it will be like just one row but on a vertical panel it will be just one column so we change one of these two accordingly to the position of the panel and then we have this timer uh, again not interesting stuff uh, I'll just uh, switch past it and then there's this startup timer which is actually just a kind of a hack to make this work and just to run something as soon as the panel is uh, actually loaded and this is uh, the main QML file then we have the config overlay which I won't go through completely but basically this file is about this top part with with the add widgets hub spacer and everything is for when you're actually editing uh, the panel with, this is why it's called the configuration overlay and then finally we have the loud layout manager which again was opened in our studio which is not what I want what I want really I want to open it with Kate and um, the important thing about the light the layout manager it uh, has a function to restore the panel and the position of all the elements after booting up um, function to save all of um, the applets uh, when you change it 
a function to remove an applet and then insert before, insert after, insert at index. All these functions are also insert at the coordinates. All of these functions are to actually insert applets inside of the panel at the right position. Then finally, there's this uh, function, which is from me, uh, update margins, which basically uh, checks uh, each applet, where is it, whether on a thick, um, uh, thick area or on a normal area. So for each one, it says, okay, this one is a still thin area, thin area, thin area, thin area. Then there's a spacer, then there's the task manager, which is thin area another spacer and then here there is the invisible margin separator and as soon as soon as it sees this it says okay we need to switch from thin to thick and now this one is thick this one is thick this one is th thick and so on so we actually take each uh, child and then we set its uh, in thick area to whether they actually are in a thick area. So this is very important for all the applets to actually have uh, the correct, um, the correct, uh, you know, side uh, margin actually. And then what this code also does is to create a new object based off on the rectangle highlight element that we've seen before. So basically, what this does is says every time that there is a margin separator we need to create a component that draws the margin, the blue margin on top and bottom. So it does it one time for this one, then it draws um, the part where it gets smaller, and then it does it another time for the right part. So we actually have two uh, rectangle highlights element, three if you count the part where it gets smaller at the middle. And that was about it. So. This was an overview of the panel. Um, I've said pretty much uh, all of the important code that you need to know about if you want to edit a panel. So if you are interested in, you know, developing your own feature or fixing a bug that annoys you and stuff, this is where you actually want to look at. If you are interested on the, you know, appearance of the panel, then that's something else entirely and it's defined in Plasma Framework, in the desktop theme, let's take Breeze an example, widgets, panel background. This is where the actual appearance of the panel is defined. But if you're looking for the code, well, it's this one. <laughs>